Christmas. This week, I'm gonna be showing you how to paint using non-traditional materials. I have here a cup of coffee and also a cup of tea that I have brewed. And I'm gonna be using that as my painting materials. I've also gathered a few different size brushes. I have two thin point ones and one flat edge for when I wanna paint my larger areas. Before I start painting, I wanna actually sample out how the color is gonna come out using both of them. So I'm just gonna form a little, kind of like a sample on the top to see how thick the color comes out and like what type of tint and shades it is. And of course, the more you add, the darker it will come out. And these are all different tints of brown, obviously. And I don't really have to clean my brush. I'm just gonna dip it in each one. The tea is gonna be definitely a lot, lot lighter. When I do this, I'm actually painting a landscape for this one. So I'm gonna mix up my coffee since it's been sitting there for a minute. And I'm gonna start by doing a line down the middle where the water meets the land because I wanna form a nice division. And here, actually, I'm gonna grab my thicker brush since I'm gonna use that to paint, kind of close off where I think my mountains are gonna be. And for this, I'm actually looking at a picture on my computer don't have to if you have kind of a like a thought of how your landscapes gonna look like you can just use your imagination for that I like looking at a picture it usually helps me a little bit better on placement on where everything is going to end up let it dry for a little bit and then come back and we'll work on it a little bit more and add more of the finer details. Okay, now that my layers are dry, I actually also went ahead and did a second layer of coffee on the middle ground mountains to make them seem like they're the ones that are a little closer than the mountain in the back. That came out a little more light using the T. And I even left a little bit of space in the middle showing that that's where the start of the river or the lake is. And now I'm gonna go ahead and using my thin point brush, I'm gonna use my coffee. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit because remember I said that I keep the grains on the bottom to really make sure it's nice and thick. I'm gonna mix this up really well and I'm gonna start adding my trees that are in the middle ground and I'll even add some plant life down here in the foreground so it's on the other side of the lake instead of on this side. I'm gonna do first my trunks and then I'll go in and add the branches and leaves. Now that I'm done with all the trunks of my leaves, I'm actually gonna let these dry as well. I really like to wait till each layer dries and then I'm gonna go in and add the next step, which is gonna be the leaves. And before I also forget, I'm gonna label the little marks I did up here to sample out how they look like. The tea and the different coffee layers. So this is coffee, one, and then coffee. You don't have to do this. I just do this so I remember what in the world I did this for. And now I'm gonna give this a couple minutes and then go back in and do that. And actually, while this is drying, I can actually start adding in those little foreground details that I was saying um, that's gonna be on the other side of the lake. So the little random branches, I'll do that right now since it's only one layer. Add 
cutting your tree's branches and leaves. Again, you're gonna use a really thin point brush since the detail is gonna be very tiny and especially for photo is tiny as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the coffee grounds again because I want it to be extremely dark. And I'm gonna mix it. I'm gonna start with the tree on the top, so on the land part. And I'm making the bristles aim downwards. And then it starts long at the bottom and then it goes and gets shorter on top. So there's that one tree. When I do the reflection for that one in the water, I don't really want it to be exactly the same since it is a reflection. I want it to look like it's glistening in the water. So instead of having the branches aim towards the bottom in a diagonal line, I'm just going to have straight lines instead for this part. So it kind of gives it more of a illusion that it's in the water instead of up here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to all of my trees that I did. Now if you even want to take it a step further, I would darken the trees up on the land part and if it seems a little more lighter down here, almost ghost like that would actually be perfect because since it is a reflection, it will be a little lighter. It will just give it that really cool kind of in water aspect if it's a little lighter in color. As the last step for the water part, give it kind of the little reflection ripples. So I would do kind of little squiggly lines going through the whole thing. I'm going to use my T just to make it a little lighter. Don't want to take away too much from the top part. So it'll give it the sense that it's the water down here and It'll also make the trees at the bottom not as crisp. Okay, and now that we're fully done, I went ahead and even darkened up some of these areas. Of course, we are using coffee and tea, so the way that it's gonna turn out when it dries is gonna be a lot different. It'll start to lighten up a lot of your areas, so I would recommend darkening it after every layer that you let dry until you get it to the way you'd like it to look. And one more tip for when this is fully dry, since it is coffee and we're using a lot of a water-based material, your paper is gonna start to wrinkle and fold up. So when this is fully dry, what I like to do is stick it under a really heavy book overnight, and then tomorrow you'll go back to it and it's perfectly flattened out and not as wrinkly. Well, have fun guys and enjoy.